In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with scatter plots. Example A, plot the following points on a scatter plot, with m as the independent variable, so that's our x, and n as the dependent variable. Number both axes from 0 to 20. If a correlation exists between the values of m and n, describe the correlation. Okay, so we have this table, and I've already set up a graph for us with our x, x and y axes. So x is really like our m and y is our n. So the first thing you want to do to make your scatter plot is to plot all the points. So you'll start with 4, 5. So 4 is like your x coordinate and 5 is your y coordinate and plot the point. Then go over to 9, 3 and 13, 11. And keep going like this until you have plotted all your points. Okay, so I've plotted all my points, and now our job is to see, is there a relationship between these two variables? Is there a correlation? And it looks to me like there's no correlation at all. There's no overall trend. It's not like as m increases, n also increases, because we started out, this is an early point that has m is relatively low, but n is really high. But then we have this point over here where m is high and n is low, and there's really no overall connection. So I would say in this case, there's no correlation. Now let's look at example B. Describe the correlation, if any, in the following scatter plot. Now compared to example A, there's definitely a relationship here or a correlation between the two variables. I almost can just draw in this line right here to show the trend of what's happening. As one variable increases, the other one is also increasing. And the slope of my best fit line is positive. So this would be a positive correlation, and it might even be a strong positive correlation because those points are pretty close to that line. They're all pretty close to making a line to begin with. Example C. The following table consists of the marks achieved by nine students on chemistry and math tests. So we have a table right here. Plot the above marks on a scatter plot with the chemistry marks on the x-axis and the math marks on the y-axis. Draw a line of best fit and use this line to estimate the mark that student I would have made in math had she or he or she taken the test. So we're going to try to use our scatter plot to figure out really what's going on right here. So we'll start by plotting each of these points on the graph and then drawing the line of best fit. So I have a graph set up down here. And so I'm going to start by just plotting all the points from the table into that graph. So I'll start with 49, 29, and then 46, 23, and so on. All right, so there are all the points. And now we're gonna just do our best to draw a line of best fit. Again, if you want to really make one, the best way is to use a computer or a calculator, but we can just eyeball it for right now to get a general sense. So you're just trying to draw in a line that passes through some of the points perhaps and ends up with an equal number of points above and below and the distances above and below the line are sort of the same for the points not on the line. So I would say that that line is pretty close to a line of best fit. Now that we have that, the line of best fit we can use to try to figure out that missing point in the table. We knew that student I got a 53 in chemistry and we're trying to figure out what they probably get, would have gotten in math. So if the 53 was in chemistry, and that is our x-axis, and math is our y-axis, we can try to find 53, which is about right here, and go up until we hit our line. So it looks to be about right here, and see what that is. And it's about 35. So I would estimate that this student got about a 35 in math on the test if they would have taken it, that's what they would have gotten. Something to keep in mind is if you can figure out the actual equation for the line of best fit, an equation 
like y in y equals mx plus b form, you could always use that to figure out the exact value for that missing coordinate. You could just plug in 53 for x in your equation and see what else what you get for y, and that would give you your answer just as you can read it off the graph like we did. It's just sometimes it's sort of hard to read off the graph. But in this case, we didn't actually know the equation of this line. That would be something you would know if you did it with your computer or a calculator. So what we did was a good way to at least estimate what the student would have gotten.